Hi, this is Paul again. I'm going to call this video the platonic order of DNA. I showed in my last videos that I have figured out the lung geometry. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the icosahedron. So I'm going to start by showing you the size 6 icosa. And I'm showing you the vectors. There are 6 vectors, but when they go through, it makes 12 vectors. These vectors are extremely important. This is what gives us the perfect order in DNA geometry. I'm not impressed by the people that says everything is chaos. In my earlier videos, I focused a lot on the dodecahedron. Now I'm beginning to change my mind. I'm beginning to think the icosahedron is the most prominent player. Now, if you look at each one of them vertices, each one is surrounded by five other vertices. Okay, let's take a look at the cyan vector first. And you can see I'm showing a yellow pentagon upper and lower. The top five colors can go clockwise around the pentagon. And the bottom five colors can go anti-clockwise. I guess this could be something like the Lorentz effect. But this is perfect order. And I guess only a crank would show trivial geometry. Okay, let's take a look at the green vector. We can do it again on the green vector. Now look at the red and the blue vectors. They are 180 degrees difference. And you can plainly see that the colors are going around in the opposite sequence. This is interesting. Let's take another look. Now if you look at the two green pentagons, they are 180 degrees about difference. But if you look at the color sequence, they are 180 degrees and they go in the opposite direction. But if you look at the rotating arrows, they are both going in the same direction. I thought they'd go in opposite directions, but I got caught out in this one. But I'm trying to emphasize on the importance of these vector sequences. It's all about them sequences. And I've showed in my earlier videos that this gives us the DNA geometry. This five vector stuff is basically for the B DNA. So let's go to a new scene. I've got something new to show you. For this, we're only going to need two vectors. And I'm going to use the blue vectors as a center axis. Now I'm going to bring in the geometry on the red vector that gives us B DNA. I am showing two size 3 icosahedral outlines and a pair of icosahedras to each of them. These are just two halves of the BDNA geometry. We need to go to copies until we get a run. This geometry will make five positions 72 degrees about. Let's take a look. Now notice the colors on the icosahedras. They always stay in the same orientation. This is the vector system. This is how we get everything in perfect order. Now I'll rotate the size 3 icosas and I'll show the colors as well and also show the vectors. Notice that the size 3 vertices fit perfectly in the size 6 icosa. Okay, now I'll rotate four copies of the red pair so that we'll have five pairs going around. And after the five, I'll bring the blue rung geometry in also, and that'll give us a six. We are now ending up with some incredible geometry. Look at the triangles in the center of the faces. Those triangular faces are missing for a reason. In front, I show 12 size 3 icosas. All this will be used for B DNA and Z DNA. There is absolutely no waste. I am showing five pairs rotating around the blue vector. This could be repeated on the other five vectors also, exactly the same. All this 72 degree rotation is basically for the B DNA. Now what you're looking at is basically a processor for giving us the DNAs. It only gives us the initial geometry for B DNA. We have to go to more copies before we can make runs. Okay, now we're going to leave the 12 icosa setup and I'm going to show you simpler geometry now for that polyedra. You can see that we have 12 pentagon saucers rotating around. 
and these 12 saucers can be replaced by size 3 icosahedra, which can be used for BDNA along the 12 vectors. We are also showing 20 triangular gaps now. I've put together a new polyhedron with these gaps. Let's take a look. I have filled the gaps with polygons and kept them to the same colors of the faces. I've given this polyhedron a new outline. Now look what happens when I take the original polyhedron, which is the icosahedron away. Now look what we've got. We have a new polyhedron and it's called an icosidodecahedron. Each of the triangular faces are all colored to match the 1020 vector system. This is going to be used for ADNA. Now you can see that the vectors are two colors. These match the five cube system and they're all perfectly in order. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in the dodecahedron. Now this dodeca, which gives you five cubes, all comes out of the icosahedron. Maybe one day a professor is going to say the icosahedron is very important. Okay, so let's take a look at this dodecahedron. We'll only use the red and yellow and cyan and yellow vectors. And we'll take all the triangles away except the four triangles for them vectors. And I'll give you a, a quick glimpse of the icosa size 6 outline. Now I'm going to make copies of the icosita in the center and move it up root 3 times 100. And you see the third icosita centers on the top triangular face. And look, when we bring in the fourth icosita, she centers perfectly on the vertex of the size 6 dodeca. And when we make three copies going down ways, it does the same. And please note that these icositas are moved along their face center axis. And they do not go between the vertex as center axis as on B DNA. Now these icositas root three apart makes it possible to figure out the exact size of the icosa to the dodeca. We know for sure the size of the dodeca because it's made up of six cubic wonder cubes. In front you see six Plato cubes and five Bucky cubes. It's the Bucky cubes that morphs into the little icositas. So I'm going to hide the Bucky cubes. And now it's plain to see there are four cube diagonals between the two triangular faces. And there are six diagonals between the vertices of the dodeca. So I think I'm giving you enough information to make accurate sizes of dodeca and icosa. Okay, now we'll go back to the icositas again. Now we can hide the icositas and just keep them two colored vectors. And we'll now focus on the stuff that spins around the yellow and red vertical axis. Now I'll give it a phi Yucatan on the bottom. And we'll give it a blue Yucatan for the top. Now we'll add the six vectors for the Yucatans. And we can hide the dodeca. Okay, now we'll bring in the A, D, and A rank. This rotates 44.6 and 75.4 degrees. This pair of golden ratio angles, which makes 120 degrees, it goes around three times to make a full turn. The center of the faces are arranged on the icosa to give you exactly these angles. Let's do the rotation around the yellow and cyan vector as well. So now you can see that she'll rotate exactly the same on the yellow and cyan vector. Now this will do the same on all 10 vectors. Isn't that something? Okay, now we'll go back to the bare icosar again. And I'm going to bring in the 10 DNA assemblies for the 10 vectors. Now you can see that the size 3 icosas are arranged in a perfect system around the center of the faces of the icosa. So we're going to have 20 of these size 3 icosas in the size 6 icosa. And I showed earlier that the BDNA has 12 icosas 
and they are arranged around the vertices of the icosa. Now these icosas are shown in color to be more clear, but actually they're just like little atoms. In my earlier videos, I show how a dodeca seems to act just like a processor, but the icosa makes the dodeca. So that must be a processor also. I show earlier that everything can be made out of the little icosita. You can make a size three out of the icosita, and a pair of size 3 will make the size 6 icosa. And when we add more icositas, we get the dodeca. And the dodeca will give us 5 cubes. So these 5 cubes could give us 5 systems of cubic wonder. So it seems that the little icosita starts everything. I don't think hyping up chaos will give you something as simple as this. So now I think we'd better move on to the Z DNA. Okay, we'll go back to the icosa on its own again. I got something new to show you. At the ends of the purple and red vectors, it forms a beautiful rectangle on the same plane. The blue vector is not on the same plane. It slopes away a little bit. Now this blue vector can be used for B DNA. I'll bring in a red pair first. Now look, we can rotate this around in five positions around the blue vector. Let's bring in the purple pair and we'll hide the red pair. And you can see that we can rotate this pair also in five positions around the blue axis. Okay, let's bring the red one back in again. And now we'll rotate the pair of them in five positions around the blue axis. You can see the purple pair going around first and the red pair lagging by 72 degrees. So I think this demonstrates that DNA works in a perfect sequence. But the reason I'm showing these two pairs together is because the four icosas will give us a Z DNA also. And I think I'll hide the colors of the size three icosas. And now I'm going to bring in the red and yellow center vector. Now this is going to act as a new rotation axis instead of the blue one that we used for B DNA. So now we can hide the blue vector. And I think we'll hide the icosa as well. We can see better. The red and purple icosa assemblies on the top will give us the molecules for the Z DNA for the top. And we get the same then on the pair for the bottom. I showed this in my last video, so I'm just going to give you a glimpse just to show you. Because this video is only to show you how the three types of DNA are interrelated. So now we go back to the icosa assemblies again. So let's fill the size 3 icosas and give them a spin. Now you can see that the size 3 icosas rotate at 120 degrees perfectly around the center yellow red axis but notice the vectors are those vectors used for B DNA so you can see that the Z DNA always rotates around the axis of the A DNA and you can see when we make two copies as we rotate 120 degrees about we are given a full house again with 12 size 3 icosas and 24 icositas and this total will give us a perfect system of Z DNA with absolutely no wastage whatsoever. We have a perfect 100% usage with 0% for junk DNA and 0% for chaos. So what I'm going to do now is hide the colors of the size 3 icosas again because I've got something else that's interesting to show you. Now notice that the cyan rectangle rotates 120 degrees with the assembly. I think we might have got something important here, so let's take a look at it. I'm going to divide the big rectangle into four smaller rectangles. Let's see what we've got. Now I'll make the diagonals the same color as the vectors, and we can hide the vectors. It is now plain to see that the smaller rectangles fit perfectly on the vertices of the size 3 icosa outlines. 
Now we have a choice of a rectangle or size 3 icosas and we can switch them back and forth no problem. Now this is important because it's going to make DNA a lot simpler. Rectangles are a lot easier to understand because they're like pages of a book. Now I'll add the little red vectors that goes in the rectangle also. And we can also add little purple vectors. Now I'll convert this assembly into a couple of ZDNA molecular rungs. And I am showing the center red and yellow vector. So now we'll go back and we'll switch from the red and yellow Z axis to the blue BDNA axis. And for this I'm only going to show the red vector BDNA stuff. Now this is something different. The ZDNA made the molecule straight away. The BDNA needs to go to the second copy. So I'm just moving this one to the copy. Now we've got a zigzag configuration that gives us a BDNA rung. I'll show you some color for a few seconds. And then I'll convert it into a BDNA molecular AT rung. Okay, so I've shown the ZDNA and the BDNA molecules coming out of the rectangles. Now we'll see what we can do with the ADNA. In front I show a red and yellow ADNA assembly and a yellow and cyan ADN assembly. And they form a rectangle. We'll hide the colors and take a look. For this we only have to show the cyan and yellow pieces. Now we'll move the left hand side up 173.2 root 3. Now it gives us the zigzag configuration for an ADNA molecule. So I'm showing you a GC molecule for ADNA. I went into detail about the three types of DNA molecules in my last three videos. Okay, let's go back to that ADNA rectangle again. Now this rectangle is only used for going around the phi Yucatan. This is what gives us the ADNA golden ratio helix. So it goes 44.6 along the short length of Yucatan and 75.4 along the longer length of the Yucatan. They are golden ratio to each other. They can be 147 and 258. Both sets being 120 degrees about. Okay, now I'm going to show you the 369 because this gives us a smaller rectangle and it only rotates around three positions, the 369, 120 degrees apart. In my earlier video, Stretch and Winding Strings, I found that the 369 seemed to be giving me good results in stretching and winding and stuff like that in the animation. Some people have written about Tesla saying that he used to say if only people knew the importance of 369. And they also say that the scholars started to call him a crank. Maybe it helped to put them in a higher class. Anyways, this is Paul saying thank you very much for watching my video.